Yo, what's up guys? It's Prince Charming. Today we're gonna be checking out 10 weird things all teenagers do. So I'm not a teenager no more because I'm over 18. Once you're over 18 or 19, you're not a teenager no more. But really it's 18. I would say it's 18 because you're you're technically called an adult once you hit 18. So I would say 18 is like when you're not a teenager no more. But those years, man, oh, those years, it's so cringe. I, I remember some of the things I did. It's just pure cringe. I can't believe I did those things. Like my freshman year of high school, sophomore year, like, oh, I can't believe myself it just makes me want to just mm. most of my viewers are probably like under the age of 18 and like have yet to go to high school and I'm letting you know you're not gonna be the same person <laughs> person I am right now in college versus the person I was in high school two different people like I'm telling you, you probably you don't think you would change but you're gonna change and it's usually for the better like you usually grow up become smarter some people don't some people stay in that high school mind frame but I'm just letting you know guys people change and sometimes it's for the better sometimes gotta leave those people behind but go ahead and comment what's the weirdest thing you did when you were young so since some of y'all aren't teenagers yet what is the weirdest thing you did when you were young man i did a lot of weird things when i was young the weirdest thing okay i'm gonna tell y'all golly i can't believe i'm telling y'all i had a perm <laughs> I honestly had a perm my freshman year of high school. It was like the first day of school. And I, I, just, I don't know why I got it. Golly, man. I have no excuse. Absolutely no excuse for why I did that. But it happened. Also, make sure you subscribe and get me to 100,000 subscribers by my birthday on July 28th, guys. We have about 10K more to go. And we're really on the edge, guys. We're really on the edge. So if you want that giveaway, you got to hit that subscribe button and get me to 100K before July 28th. And like I said, I'm going to be doing like a live stream. I'm going to announce it probably like four or five days ahead. It's going to be on YouTube. YouTube and on you now so you're gonna get like double the pro double the stream double the stream so make sure you like comment on this video and let's check out these 10 weird things all teenagers do coming in that's number 10 we have ignoring doorbells we've all oh, been there man, I the doorbell <laughs> rings and you're the only one home you could go and answer it but you're busy doing other things or just can't be bothered most teenagers this is how you get robbed though playing xbox or browsing instagram than answer the door not only do you have to get up and yeah open the door, but get you that package have to have small talk with a delivery guy or whoever it is this can sometimes cause anxiety for some teens who are shy and don't like talking to strangers. And when their moms what? get home and ask if talking. any packages were delivered, the answer is a big fat no, even if the doorbell may have rang. In a survey, 60% of teenagers said they didn't answer the doorbell. Is this the same lazy. For you? I'd say it's quite accurate for me, unless I knew food was coming, then you have to answer the door. Yeah, honestly, man, come on. Uh, <laughs> whenever the doorbell rings, do y'all go up to get it? Like, be honest for yourself. I do now just because I order a lot of things from Amazon so I always think it's like one of my packages but honestly it feels like around the night time and I know I didn't order anything and like nobody else is home you, you can come back in the morning like I don't need to talk to you you're not that important if you don't have my phone number for where you can't call me to ask me if I'm home or something you're probably not somebody I need to be talking to anyway I already know Jesus I don't want to buy your Girl Scout cookies like go away <laughs> next up is phases it's not a phase mom top 10 is my life okay as a teenager hey, we all go Chris through phases mom. they're usually associated with a type of music, fashion, or the activity. I Just walk around any high school and you'll see them. There's the emos and goths who color their hair black and listen to gothic music. Uh, the skater wanna be kids cats. who love skating and a certain type of music and clothing. And the straight edge kids who buckle down and do all of their schoolwork. And of course other groups like hippies and jocks. These I phases the may dogs. seem lame oh and cringy gosh. now, but they were your life back when you no, were a hipsters. teen. I hate I'm hipsters. sure you remember your mom telling you you were going through a phase. You may not have believed her at the time, but once you find out who you really are when you're older, you can confirm that was just a phase. They may seem bad now, but they did help you find out what you really like and Why don't like and play a part in how you are now. 62% of teens say they went through one or more phases, mm -hmm. with a surprising 40% <laughs> saying they experienced three or more. You did you cat? go through any phases as a teenager? And if so, how many? The hippie phase. Okay, so the the phase I went through was the skater phase. It was kind of like jerk. Th this this was when jerking first came out, guys, and like it was so popular. Everybody wanted a jerk. Like it was just crazy, man. Y'all know that jerk song? Uh, you a jerk? I know. You a jerk? I know. You a jerk? And this was like when like skating brands were coming out. Like everybody was like wearing the skinniest of the skinniest of the jeans. Like I'm talking about, you cannot breathe in those jeans. And you'll wear Vans or like. Like high top su uh, Supras. Oh, Supras. Oh, I can't forget those. But like the funny thing is, 
everybody sucked at it. Like, nobody could actually skate. We just all had skateboards. It would just, like, ride around in them. But nobody could do a trick. It's hilarious. A lot of fake skaters. Man, oh, man. Next up is selfies. 20 years ago, you'd have to really think before slapping a photograph. That is because film cost money to develop, and you didn't have unlimited mm -hmm. amounts of space to keep your photos in. And if you wanted to take a photo with you in it, you'd either have to use a timer or ask someone else. But with the modern inventions of front-facing cameras and selfie sticks, that is a thing of the I'm past. I'm not a fan of selfies, While people though. used to take photos I'm of faces of photos. and events, teenagers now interested in a different subject. Themselves. That's right, no matter what the viewer Women subject are interested is, in teens now seem to feel the need to always be in their own images. This is partly due to oversharing, something a lot of teens do. That's right, mm -hmm. it's not normal to post every single sandwich you eat and every single time you go to the bathroom. This mentality has even led to some inappropriate <laughs> selfies, whether it's with ill relatives in the background or if you've just had a surprising plane landing in the ocean. 90% of teens say they take selfies a lot. What? Is this the same they probably thing? didn't get a ticket and if either. so, think back, have you ever taken any inappropriate selfies be honest i trust me I, I i understand the whole oversharing thing whenever we go i go out to a restaurant with my friends i am probably the only one who doesn't bring out their phone get on snapchat and like record what they're about to eat before they like i'm eating like i don't need to show you every single meal it's so annoying guys like i i feel the pain and i'm not even a big fan of selfies i'm a big fan of photos like i don't like using the front camera taking pictures i want a professional like me taking a pose with something like that photo like because i, I want to look good and i don't think selfies like really capture how good you look. I, I like full body or like actual professional pictures. Cause you know, Prince Charming, is just, he's just too much for a selfie. Like you can't contain Prince Charming in a selfie. He needs the full HD, 1080p quality. Coming up next is stealing drinks. What? Teenagers are at an age where they want to experiment with new things. And one of those things is often drinking. Never in stole most countries, drink. you have to be 18 to buy drinks, or 21 if you're in America. So a lot of Only teens place end up taking 21 is America. drinks instead. Whether it's one of My dad's luck. beers, granddad's flask, or mum's wine. Teens do this to try new things out or use them with friends. Also, teens are often very susceptible to peer pressure. This means that sometimes, even if teens don't want to steal their parents' drinks or drink some of their friends' stole, they do it anyway. This can be dangerous if teens aren't educated about this. But if they are, I mean, it it's can be dangerous to try it dumb. out and form their own opinions. 54% of teens say they have done this or plan to do it. Did you ever do this? And if you did, did you get caught? I would say leave a comment, but you might want to keep this anonymous. You know, just in case. Yeah, quite honestly, peer pressure is a real thing, but parents if any parents actually watch my videos let me just tell y'all one thing your kid is gonna do it whether you like it or not it's not how many times you tell them don't do it it's whether or not they want to do it or not because trust me i know some kids with the best parents best parents in the world and they still turn out bad and they have some bad parents worst parenting in the world and the kids come out good it's just whatever the kid wants to do i'm not saying parents don't have an influence i'm just saying it always lies with the kid like the kid has the power over their own life you gotta realize we're growing at a we're growing faster than we're growing physically like mentally we're growing faster than we're growing physically because we've been doing the worst things at a younger age every single day man oh man y'all don't even want to know half the stories i'm gonna keep this g-rated i'm gonna keep this g-rated next up is internet challenges we've These all are, seen them ugh. it started with the cinnamon challenge but it now seems like a new teen trend internet challenge appears every the week Kylie and lips. they're becoming <laughs> riskier like and lips. riskier by the day whether it's the salt Same and ice challenge or the playing chicken with train challenge these challenges may seem cool and mm -mm. extreme in the moment, but we can all agree that these are really dumb. And some teams have sadly passed away due to these insane internet challenges. So to any pre-teens watching yeah, this, don't try these yourself out. On fire. It's not worth the 5 seconds of fame. 59% of teens say they have done an internet challenge before. Hopefully they Who didn't do one as stupid as some of the challenges we've talked about in this video. But if they did, I sure hope they recorded it. Every one of y'all have done a stupid internet challenge. Like, it's not just me. It's not the people in this video. Every single person has done an internet challenge. The internet challenge I did was Brian Banana, the Connor challenge i never did the cinnamon or the salt and ice i don't really care for pain pain like i did a hot sauce challenge i would never do that dumb stupid set yourself on fire challenge like what is the point of that people really actually set themselves on fire it's insane for some views for some subscribers golly buy them <laughs>
<laughs> you know that never works. Next up is anger. One thing teens are infamous for is mm -hmm. their hormones. And a product of hormones anger. is emotions. Very volatile emotions, that is. Teenagers can go from being happy one second to being angry the next. This means it's not uncommon for them to lash out and scream they hate their parents. Really, this is just their hormones don't. coming into play. But it can still have some negative effects and make teens feel bad. So parents don't I worry hate if you teens lash out and seem a little nasty. It's just science taking place and they will get over it. These moods swings happen to most teenagers. This is heightened as teens are changing, which can make them confused. Also, sometimes life sucks as a teenager. You're in school with nasty people sometimes, and life unforgiving sometimes teachers. Suck, but it gets better. Sometimes school and life can seem pointless to teens, causing them to be disillusioned and mm -hmm. fed up. We can all relate, and if yeah, you're a parent, I mean, think back. You, I'm sure you weren't always smiling as a teen. That is so true. Like, I, I am very prone to lashing out randomly, like, for no reason at all. I can just, I can just snap at you. You know, I'm, I'm always a good, I'm always a good kid at heart. So if you ever meet me in real life, like, don't be afraid to walk up to me and say, I'm gonna dab you up, fist pump you and everything. I'm a nice person. It's just when you really, really, really get on my nerves, I will snap on you. Like, honestly, I will snap on you. Next up, we have mess. This is one teenage habit that sometimes sneaks into a adulthood. I got through this phase. Making a mess is something teens are known for. And some teenage boys' bedrooms are places you'd want to avoid going. <laughs> teenage girls can also be guilty of this, with clothing and makeup everywhere. Mm -hmm. Not to mention hairbands being left on every floor. This drives Hair parents everywhere. crazy and is the number one reason for family arguments. Sure, some teens are neat freaks who don't stand for any mess. But in a survey, 70% of teenagers said they get yelled at for having a messy room. Mm -hmm. Or worse, messing up the entire house. If this is you, then put away that plate and put those old t-shirts in the wash. It may seem like a huge amount of effort is needed, but it can help you. Some psychologists are lazy. say that living in mess can make you lazy mm. and feel bad. So tidy up your room and live a better life. It's not that hard and could make your parents' That's life painful. a lot easier. What kind of room is that? I got through this messy room phase, all this messiness. Like I'm clean now. Like I, I can't stand people who are messy. Like that is a phase. And if you if you're still messy and you're like past 18, What's wrong with you? Like, you better clean yourself up figuratively and physically. <laughs> Next up is not answering the phone. Oh, this, this is annoys very me. Similar to not answering the doorbell. We've all had a phone call before and totally ignored if I'm calling it. You, you better and answer. the same is true for calls on Ain't our own cell phones. Than me. In a world where we use texts and social media, where you can choose when or if you want to respond, phone calls are hardly a popular option. This is why a lot of the time, if you call a teenager, they're not picking up. Also, it can be annoying to get into a long conversation when you're doing something else like watching Netflix. watching Netflix and some teens say they feel Netflix anxious about chilling. answering phone calls because sometimes hormones can make teens shy. So maybe try texting a teenager instead of calling them. The success rate of getting through to them will likely be far greater. Unless they're avoiding you, then Who there's no chance. 68% of teens say they don't pick up the phone for one of these reasons. Do you pick up the phone or do you let it ring? I more or less do pick up the phone, but honestly, if you do text me, I probably will respond faster just because if I'm watching a good show and you call me, I will probably not pick up. I'm like, if it's important, they can just text me. But realistically, I rather do, I rather will call somebody than, you know, back and forth text message. Cause calling, you can get like through 20 minutes of text messaging and about two to three minute phone chat. Like it's just instant back and forth, back and forth talking. Cause talking is way faster than texting. But like I said, if I'm watching something good, like Attack on Titan, trust me, I probably won't even respond to your text. Like <laughs> Attack on Titan is so good, man. When's season three coming out? Next up, we have overreacting. As we mentioned before, Teenagers have a lot of yeah, hormones, snap on you. and one result of this is sometimes going a bit oh, over cry. the top. Also, many teens haven't really yet experienced life outside their school or neighborhood. This means that the slightest thing mm. like wearing the same dress as someone else to prom or getting the wrong color oh, phone for Christmas can like be that. a huge deal. We all know it's not, and in hindsight, any teens also know it's not either. But in the moment, it can seem like a biggie. Most teens say they have overreacted to something small. Once they're older and get out into the world, they realize that stuff doesn't matter. But it you really can't doesn't. blame teenagers for their overreactions. Blame hormones instead. Scientifically, uh. there's no way to get around it. But one thing some gurus tell teens to do is think of all the good stuff they have. Because compared to somebody else in the world, you likely have it good. While you might be Man, freaking out over having the that's same dress truth. as your friend, some kids around the world can't afford clothing at all. And while getting a black iPhone instead of a white one may seem like a hardship, some people still use flip phones. I Those hate people horror. like that. Honestly, we all overreact. And it's not a good thing. I'm gonna admit I do overreact sometimes, and but I got over that. The my worst overreaction is like the day I really realized I gotta I gotta cut it. Feels like when a girl 
I don't know if she liked me or not, but she basically spread a rumor that I was trying to get with her. And I didn't even have her number. I never talked to this female one time. The only time we interacted is because we were in a theater school play together. It's like the whole class. So like we were in the play, but I was not in her scenes. So I didn't even have like any lines with her. Like I did not know this girl. She was telling everybody else I'm trying to get with her. I don't know if she just wanted like some brownie points or she just wanted to seem cool or popular because I kind of was that dude. <laughs> No, but seriously, like, I don't know why I just snapped and, like, exposed her in front of the whole class. You know, back then, Prince Charming was still exposing. Basically, put her on blast, told everybody I don't even know her. Ain't nobody went to old Dusty. <laughs> no, but I probably shouldn't have done that. And I do apologize for that if you're watching this video. Next up is odd diets. One thing a lot of teens the do best is diet. diet. This is especially What's prominent <laughs> among teenage <laughs> girls. But these aren't just regular diets where you eat healthier. There's no They're usually odd, that. trendy diets that seem bizarre. These diet fads come and go for different generations of teens. Anyone remember the baby food diet where all you eat is baby yeah. food? Or maybe the lemonade diet where you only drink lemonade? These questionable diets spread around social media before they go viral. Then every teenager appears to be trying them out. These diets are now trending more and more, especially with all the body image issues that teens of today face. The best advice is to stay healthy by eating right and exercising. There's no other way around it. Or there is no other way around it. Doesn't sound half bad. Have you ever done one of these weird diets? Personally, I haven't, and I'm glad. Some of these diets do not look good. Some say these diets work really well, but actually most of them don't work at all. In fact, the baby food diet has been proven to not actually be good for you. Yeah, I. <laughs> the only diet I need to do is, you know, eat good and work out and you can get like this. Like, if you wanna look like Prince Charming, you wanna look like Prince Charming, you just gotta eat good and work out. There is no other way around it. Trust me, eating baby food is just disgusting. Like, you just look stupid. <laughs> I did do a fat diet one. I did, um, I think it was, it's not really a fat diet because it actually works. It's called the ketosis, ketogenic, something like that. It's basically where you try to eat no carbs. And I'm telling you, the fat comes off. I'm just saying it's, the diet is nasty. Like you can't eat carbs and carbs isn't everything good. Hey, if you want a body like this, sometimes you gotta go the extra mile. But that was it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe and get me to 100,000 subscribers by my birthday on July 28th, guys. My name is Prince of Hawkum. Stay charming, my friends.